Now back into Power Query Editor, just wanted to cover off and introduce you to some of the sort of more simple transformations that we can do. Uh, so obviously we've pulled our data into Power Query, and as we know, we've got our three queries as it stands at the moment. And the steps we're going to go over are exactly the same, regardless if you're using CSV or any other file extension or data source. So the first one we're going to look at, and you may obviously use a fair bit, is filtering. So as you can see on all this data in our data preview in the middle here, we've got the drop downs which allow us to apply filters. So working in exactly the same way as you would with filters in Excel. So you can see we have a couple of options available to us. So we can, we can sort our data ascending, descending, uh, we can remove empty values, and we can apply some additional text filters, of course, if you're working with text values. If, however, you're working with a date, and sorry to jump, but we'll just go to a date example, you can see we have the uh, we have a date filter rather than text filter. And you can see we can now apply range of options from before a day, after a day, and even between two date ranges. Of course, with filters normally, and let's just jump to yet another column, um, go to priority. If you obviously want to add a filter, you just need to select the desired result or multiple results. I've just selected high here. And you can see now all of the data for this query has been filtered to high. What this means is if we were to then close and apply uh, out of um, Power Query Editor and go back to our main report, this particular query would now obviously be limited to just high. So you wouldn't be able to remove this filter once you're back into the front end of Power Query, um, Power BI, sorry. Uh, so obviously any uh, changes, transformations, filters like this you do here are obviously gonna be you know, restricting the data when you get into the front end. So obviously just one to bear in mind, but particularly useful, especially if you've got a large volume, volume of data and you only need uh, you know, a subsection of that. So we'll just remove this filter. Of course, you can either go uh, unfilter here, so go clear filter. And so, yeah, obviously it's removed the filter, but just to do an alternative to show you what's going on, when I first select my high and then go OK, just take a note of obviously our applied steps over the right-hand side here, because as you'll see, as I click onto OK, you can see that this filter has also now been captured as a step. So obviously it gives us the full traceability of what's happened and you can either remove your filter from the specific column as I did just here or all you need to do is just delete that step and of course it goes back to how it was. One other simple um, transformation, well not really a transformation but uh, an amendment you might want to make to your data is removing columns if they're not applicable. So if you pulled, like I say we've done here for this CSV file, we've pulled every single column available to us in that file, but maybe we, you know, we don't want one of these particular columns, let's say customer ID. We have no need for that. All we need to do is right click and click on to remove. You can see a new step has now been created to remove that column and it has again been dis removed from our data set, which of course will be reflected in the front end of Power BI. We can now obviously remove that step over here. And somewhat the inverse of that is if we only maybe had a couple of columns that we wanted to come through and almost remove everything else, all we need to do is select either the single column or I'm just gonna hold down the shift button and select you know, the third column. So you can see I've selected those first three columns. We can right click and go remove other columns. And now what's happened is everything other than our selections has been removed. And again, I was gonna remove that one here. So a couple of options I'm sure you'll probably find useful useful there. And then lastly, you can see, I won't go into all of these because it could take forever, but if you select one of the columns or even the table as a whole, I'll just right click clicked on description here. You can see the range of other options we have available to us. So removing of duplicates could be another interesting one. And you can see we've got a range of other items in here as well. So replacing errors, uh, Replacing values is simply a find and replace, and of course other transformations that you can do and we will cover off in future videos. So finally, if I was to right click on description, of course this works for any of the columns, you can see we have a range of additional options to us. So we looked at removing a column or removing other columns, but as you can see, there are a range of other options available to us, all the way from removing duplicates, 
uh, replacing values, so somewhat like find and replace in Excel, and a range of other options available. So it'd be my suggestion at this time to get back into Power Query yourself if you haven't done so already, and just have a play around with the two scenarios that we looked at with filters and removing columns, and also maybe have a play around with some of these other options just to familiarize yourself with what is available. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.